There are a few different Boolean techniques that I would really recommend using more often in your workflow. A lot of people don't know about these or don't know how to use them properly, so that's what we're gonna discuss in today's video. Let's go. All right, the first example I wanna show you is pretty interesting. So let's say I wanted to union these two objects together. I run a union Boolean and then I apply that union and I decide, you know what, I wanna bevel all of these edges right here. All these guys, I wanna bevel them. Now it's gonna be tricky because if I try to bevel this, it's gonna immediately hit some of the surrounding geometry. So obviously I could go in here, perhaps dissolve out some of this area and get a bit more buffer, which still might not be enough. And you can see you can only go so far and then you have to do it for all these other sides as well. Just a bit of a pain. This is why you want to make these types of decisions before you actually apply your Boolean. What I mean by that, let me show you. I'm going to go in here and this is right before I actually apply the Boolean. What I can do instead, since this Boolean has not actually been applied to the mesh, what I can do is I can just take the Boolean cutter here and bevel it that way first. So now if I go into wireframe, you can see what's happening. It will actually bevel through them simply because this um, this union is not yet applied. Right now, we're just working with the cube itself. It's not one single object yet. So I can go ahead and you know bevel that, get it right where I need it to go, and then and only then is it a good idea to go in here and then apply your boolean, and then you're good to go. Now you have exactly the result you want. Now this leads us to another situation, which I, I'm gonna use the same example here. You can kind of see, let me go into matte cap. I'm gonna go into matte cap and change to a shiny one. Not sure how well you can see it, but due to these, you know, longer end gons here, because of these vertices, this is gonna cause some shading errors. Now it's a bit harder to see here. So in fact, what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna use a cylinder instead. So let me go in and maybe just cut in something like this. We'll join it together, and you're gonna see exactly what happens here. You're gonna see if I apply this Boolean, we have all these nasty shading stretches going on, and that's simply because this is a curved surface, but all these faces here, they're end gons see what I mean? One, two, three, four, five, six vertices for the face, and so on. So to mitigate the length of the shading issues here, what you actually wanna do is you want to you know push the shading in a bit and usually we do that by adding a loop cut but if i try to add in a loop cut here it won't work because you cannot run loop cuts through n-gons only quads so what i can do instead is same idea before i actually apply that boolean let's take the actual cutter then let's add in a loop cut put it to about here so that way the shading's pushed in as you can see and now since everything else here it's a long uh, quad, we're not gonna have those shading issues, it's gonna be constrained to here. Now generally what you'll see me do in my tutorials is just kinda do it the lazy way. I'll literally go in and I'll just do something like this and just call it a day. That's perfectly acceptable as well, but um, yeah, either way works, just make sure you're adding in you know, a loop to constrain those shading issues before you actually apply your Boolean. Now, another interesting technique that a lot of you may or may not know is if you have, you know, a couple Booleans here, maybe we'll add one here, maybe we'll add one here, maybe we'll do, you know, one here in the center, just something, you know, not super exciting. What you can actually do is um, if you have, you know, these cutters, you want to move them around and they're turned on for some reason like this, what you can actually do is you can press shift plus the number of the collection of your cutter. So if your second collection is your cutter's collection, you press shift two. If it's the third collection, shift three, so on. And if you do that, it's gonna hide and unhide the cutters. As you can see, it's very easy to just kind of pop in and out, move things around if you need to, and then turn it off. And uh, just kind of makes the workflow a bit quicker than going in here each time. Now the next one I'm going to show you is one of my personal favorites and I'm going to guess if you've been around my channel for a while, this is probably old news but I'm going to show you anyways in case there's some new people here. What you can actually do is a technique called cutting the cutter. So if I have a boolean like this 
and basically it's just affecting this area this whole thing if i remove a part of this boolean then it wouldn't be affecting the mesh because the area of the mesh that gets affected is solely based on this boolean piece so basically if i remove a piece from this boolean so for example if i maybe go in here i can add in a cylinder and let's say you know i did something like this and i ran a boolean on the boolean kind of confusing it takes some time to get used to but ideally what this is going to do for us is it's going to bring back that portion of the mesh see what i mean because this um if we just hide this you're going to see this boolean is no longer affecting this area here and this is what i call cutting the cutter and you can even kind of stack these operations so you can apply the boolean that's already on the boolean like this and then that'll give you access to you know this geometry down here and then you can kind of combine it with that you know workflow i just showed you a few examples ago where you're doing the operations before applying it instead so you can get some really you know interesting you know results different techniques and things like that and you can also get some cool shapes by uh, by working this way so what i'm showing you here is you can stack these different operations that i'm presenting you don't have to use one individually you can use them you know in conjunction with each other now the next one i'm going to show you is actually very very useful in many situations so uh, what i'm going to do is maybe let's take a cube scale the cube down a bit let's maybe bevel this area just for fun and then let's just go in here add some longer bevels as well now we just have an interesting shape maybe scale the shape just a little bit and let's say i went in here and maybe ran a you know boolean cut like that and let's say i wanted to take this edge right here and i wanted to bevel this edge all I really need to do is apply the boolean and then just select this edge because if I don't apply the boolean I won't have access to the edge so make sure you apply it and then I can go in here and bevel it which isn't really a boolean technique and I'll get to that in a second but you're gonna see once I've kind of made this change I can't move this bevel this way or move it this way I can't really make any additional changes it's locked in it, the, the operation is you know applied I can't make any changes so if you want to work a bit more non-destructively, unless you're 100% sure this is what you want to do to the mesh, what you can do is stick with a more non-destructive workflow. But the issue is we don't have access to this edge right here. I can't just take the cutter and bevel it. You see what I mean? So there's actually a hack to do this. What you can do is add in a loop cut on your cutter, move it right to that point, okay? And then what you can do is you can go into vertex snap up here snap this so it's flat to one of these vertices now make sure you change your boolean operation to exact to avoid any issues and then what we can do is we can take this edge and now it's actually going to be angled in the way we'd like it and then i can basically go in here i can move this back if i'd like i can move this forward and i can just make you know pretty much you know any change i want without having to uh you know apply that boolean so pretty cool technique and can save you a bit of time and also allow you to work you know more non-destructively on your objects and the last thing i'm going to mention here is if you do work a bit more destructively i kind of go for a more hybrid workflow where i apply a lot of my booleans and then the other ones i just leave unapplied if i don't need to apply them uh, but if you want to work you know fully destructively and you just want to have that control uh, it's going to be a little bit tricky to go back you're going to have to undo any changes and things like that and if you're already a hundred steps ahead good luck so if you want to work more destructively where you're basically applying every single boolean that you work with what you can do instead is you can save multiple increments of your file hard drive space is very cheap nowadays it's not going to take a lot of space so you know every five to ten minutes you can go up here and you can use the save incremental feature um, the reason it's grayed out is because I haven't saved my first version yet But you can use the save incremental feature and you can also use the power save add-on to speed that up a little bit So if you want to work more destructively just save incremental files You can always go back to an old version if you need to and those are just some quick boolean tips I wanted to share with you. They're pretty simple, but they're 
things that can really come in useful, especially if you know when to use them. So hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know. And also check out some of our stuff over on blunderbros.com. We have our free jumpstart course over there as always. And uh, also some other products like material works, our decal pack, things like that. Anyways, I'll link all that in the description and we'll see you in the next video.